why am I the lone candidate of color on this stage? Fewer than 5% of Americans donate to political campaigns. You know what you need to donate to political campaigns? Disposable income. I guarantee if we had a freedom dividend of $1,000 a month, I would not be the only candidate of color on this stage tonight. That was Andrew Yang at the final presidential debate of 2019, making his pitch for his universal basic income plan. The tech entrepreneur has been the surprise breakthrough candidate of 2020. A dozen governors, mayors, and members of Congress have already dropped out, but Yang is still there, one of just seven to qualify for that last debate. Andrew Yang joins me live right now. Thank you for joining us, uh, sir. I want to I start with your campaign slogan. It is not left not right, but forward. What, what does that mean? Well, John, to me, it's clear the reason why Donald Trump is our president today is that we automated away 4 million manufacturing jobs that were primarily based in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Missouri, and Iowa, the swing states he needed to win. And what we did to those jobs, we are now going to do to the retail jobs, the call center jobs, the fast food jobs, and eventually the truck driving jobs. We have to have a new way forward that works for all Americans, independent of your political affiliation. So that's what I mean by not left, not right, forward. These problems are technological and apply to us all. So are, are you saying that the Democratic Party has been too tied to the left, has been too ideological, while the Republicans too far to the right? I mean, is that what you're saying? Uh, I was an ambassador in the Obama administration, uh, but to me, Democrats still have not asked themselves the hard questions as to how Donald Trump won in 2016, where if you look around the country, you see 30 percent of stores and malls closing. You see record high levels of stress, financial insecurity, student loan debt, even suicides and drug overdoses. These are the problems that voters talk to me about when I'm out there every single day. And the Democratic Party, unfortunately, is acting like Donald Trump is the cause of all of our problems. He's a symptom, and we need to cure the underlying disease. So I, I want to talk about your freedom dividend, $1,000 a month for everybody over 18. And it's everybody. Everybody who, who opts in gets the freedom dividend. Uh, why, why do you provide $1,000 to somebody like Jeff Bezos or, for that matter, Donald Trump? I mean, math. They don't need it. This plan's already been very expensive. <laughs> well, I'm glad you noticed the math. Uh, yes. pin. It stands for Make America Think Harder. <laughs> and my freedom dividend is based upon the petroleum dividend that's been in effect in Alaska for almost 40 years. Everyone in Alaska is getting between one and $2,000 a year, no questions asked, and that's the richest Alaskan and the poorest. And what this does is it universalizes it and makes it popular. There's no stigma attached to it. There's no, you get it, I don't. And my way to pay for this is by taking a toll from every Amazon sale, every Google search, every Facebook ad. So we'd be getting hundreds of millions, even billions from Jeff Bezos. So if we try and send him $1,000 a month to remind him he's an American, it's essentially immaterial. Okay, I want to turn to your health care plan because you've just released a, a, a new health care plan, and I'm a little bit confused about where you stand. First, I, I want to play uh, clips from two of your ads where you talk about health care. We need to move towards a uh, Medicare for all system where every American has access to quality and affordable services. His ideas are a blueprint for a new way forward, a health care system with Medicare for all. But I've looked at your health care plan. In fact, I, I've got it right here. And this plan does not call for Medicare for all. In fact, it, it doesn't even have a public option. So wh 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 why the dissonance here? We need to move towards universal health care that's high quality uh, and nearly cost free for Americans around the country. Mm -hmm. But reality is we have millions of Americans who are on private insurance right now and taking those plans away from them very quickly would be untenable for many, many Americans. To me, the goal of the government has to be to demonstrate that we can outcompete private plans and then push them out of the market over time. But and that's but, but, that, but, that's but, what we're but, proposing. But, but, but I'm, again, I'm confused. Your, your ad is explicit. Your ad says Medicare for all. Your plan is not Medicare for all. It's not even Medicare for some because in your plan, there's, there's not even a public option. 
Our plan is to expand a universal health care system to all Americans. Medicare for all is not the name of a bill. Medicare for all well, is universal health care for all Americans. But that Medicare for all is Medicare for all, right? I mean... Well, our, our health care plan would be would be based on Medicare and expanding it over time uh, to more and more Americans. You lower the eligibility age and then you make it widely accessible. OK, I, 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 I didn't I didn't see that in, in, in your plan. But um, but I, I want to move forward to um, the, the, the question uh, of, of your campaign. So you have, as we've established, you have been the surprise breakthrough candidate. Nobody expected you were going to still be here. You were going to be on that debate stage, just one of seven. But you've never really broken 5% in any poll in those, in those early states. What, what do you have to do to actually break through to the next level? Well, John, I certainly love being described as a surprise breakthrough. Uh, that, that seems very positive. And you and I both know they ha there hasn't been a poll in the early states in over a month. I can't wait for some new polls to come out that show how much we're growing, how much the energy and enthusiasm and the crowds are getting bigger every time I go to any of the early states. I'm on my way to New Hampshire a little bit later today to celebrate New Year's Eve. And you're going to see when the polls come out, we'll be at 5% or higher. I think significantly higher. Okay, and you've had some interesting statements on, on impeachment. Uh, you say, first of all, nobody ever asks you about it out on the trail. You've suggested Democrats have spent too much time uh, uh, talking about it. Uh, but you support the impeachment of Donald Trump, correct? Yes, I do support the impeachment process, but voters don't ask me about impeachment. They ask me about health care and child care and education and climate change. And the fact is we need 20 Republican senators to have a change of heart or a change of mind in order for impeachment to be successful. So this strikes many Americans like a ball game where you know what the score is going to be. And until that changes... To me, we need to be focused much more on presenting a new and positive vision that Americans will get excited about. That's how so, we win in 2020. So what's your advice for Democrats? Should they forego a Senate trial? I mean, if this is a ball game where you already know the final score and they're going to spend, it could be the better part of a month, maybe longer on a trial on all these issues that you say voters don't care about, uh, should they just forego the Senate trial? I mean, they've impeached them. Well, we've, we've impeached him, and if you're going to have the trial, you should make it happen as quickly and expediently as possible. I've already said that I think that the other candidates who are in the Senate, uh, Senator Warren and Sanders and Booker and, um, and Bennett, should feel free to continue their campaigns during the trial because the, the fact is we have uh, an election to win later this year and a case to make to the American people. And you've suggested that you would be open to pardoning Donald Trump if you were elected. Is, is, is that is that would you do you, do you think that there should be a, a pardon issued for Donald Trump by whoever that wins the Demo if, if a Democrat wins in November? My focus is on solving the problems that got Donald Trump elected and moving the country forward. And if you look around the world, unfortunately, it's developing countries that have fallen into a pattern of the new president or the new leader. Uh, prosecuting and sometimes imprisoning the former leader. That's not uh, a precedent that's been set here in the U.S. And to me, that's something that I would be interested in maintaining. It, so, it's so, not so, so, in so the you, country's so interest would, necessarily to, to, to look backwards. We need to look forwards. So you would not want to proceed with prosecuting Donald Trump after he left office and you would be open to a pardon? Or you think he should well, be pardoned? We would have to see what the facts were. We'd have to see what uh, what the charges were and what the attorney general advises. But my interest is in moving the country forward. All right. Andrew Yang, thank you for joining us here on This Week. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. Happy holidays, John. Yummy, 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 yummy.